some of us, yeah. uh, myself included at times, really struggle with technology. Things like Zoom or email can be overwhelming. And now there's this new technology we have to learn. And we're all in different places on our learning journeys and, and curves. So uh, what tips do you have for teachers? Where should they start? Uh, how can they start uh, familiarizing themselves with this technology? I think that's a great question. And I would say, make the stakes really low and easy as an entry point. Um, everybody's familiar so far with ChatGPT, right? So go to ChatGPT, open up a dialogue and start today. Start today by asking a simple question. Um, what should I make for dinner, right? Something as simple as that. And it will spit something back. You'll enter into a dialogue uh, or, or, you know, ask it some mundane question or ask it to do something for you. Like um, I teased my husband that he's not very good at writing cards to me and I really like cards so when our anniversary came up um, I said you know why don't you go to chat GPT <laughs> and say write a 10-year anniversary card for my wife and then enter into that dialogue um, in an iterative process the first version that comes back to you you'll see is not very personalized and not very specific so then you have to refine the prompt and you say write an anniversary card for you know a 10-year anniversary card for my wife that covers the following topics and includes the following types of sentiments. The more you learn through something that's very low stakes, now maybe some of you think it's very high stakes that he get that card <laughs> right. <laughs> but and your anniversary more, is a big deal. <laughs> it is, it is yeah. a big deal. But you know, the more you go through it in a context that is low stakes, the more you learn that how you interact in that prompt matters a lot. Once you've done that, once you've started to get comfortable with it, start to think about it from an education perspective. Understanding the power of the tool, I think is crucial. So assessments of the past for many, many people were things like write a final essay or you know write a book report about this particular book. That's really easy to generate with generative AI now. And so I think recognizing that you might come up with a different way of doing it, which is to say, okay, I'm going to design a lesson plan where what the students start with is the generated essay. So in class, I'm gonna say, okay, we're reading To Kill a Mockingbird. I'm gonna say, write a book report that is 1000 words long that summarizes the main themes of To Kill a Mockingbird. It will spit out for you a 1000 word essay that will be pretty accurate. You'll give it to the students and you'll say, engage in the process of a critical, critique of this essay. Tell me, you know, did it effectively identify the themes? Did it, um, you know, did it write it in a way that you thought was compelling? If not, tell me why not. Now, they can do those same things with ChatGPT, which is why it's important that the final product that you're grading not be that they turn in what is the answer, but that they turn in the dialogue. What you want to help them understand how to do is to refine and improve the dialogue because the art of asking the question, refining the prompts, and understanding why you're doing so, what it is that you're trying to get at, that's the process that we're trying to teach them. And if they are trying to critique the essay through that process of saying, okay, what are the weaknesses? What are the strengths? Going through that process of auditing and refining the questions with them will be transformative. Uh, one topic we haven't got to is equity and access. So how do you think yeah. that AI uh, could have an impact on equity and access of technology in the education space? I think it can both enhance it, but that's as long as we continue to have open source, free and widely accessible models, as well as you know, reliable internet connection for people, uh, you know, high broadband access, things like that. So let's back up. A lot of uh, the quality of education for students until now has depended upon their access to great teachers. That will continue to be critical. But one thing that can be democratizing for a lot of students is if you're one teacher and you have 50 students in your class, you are trying to teach to the median students, right? Mm -hmm. You're not teaching to one particular student and their way of learning. And that works to some extent, but there are some students who are always left behind by that process, um, whether it's the students at the top of the class or the students who are struggling more with materials. 
And there are only so many office hours or you know, additional hours that a teacher can spend with their students. Teaching students to be able to ask questions, to have personalized tutoring through these different chatbots and generative AI tools is incredibly valuable. So for example, a student doesn't fully understand the lesson plan, but can go and say, okay, can you explain it to me in you know, a different way? Explain it to me as if you were explaining it to my grandmother. Um, describe it to me in a way that assumes that I don't have any background. Now notice again, I'm varying the prompts, which is what you have to teach the right. students is you can ask these different generative AI tools to take on different personas or to say, I don't understand that. Can you simplify it for me? Can you describe it in a different way? Can you give me an analogy? Can you give me a hypothetical? By doing so, every student can have a personalized learning tutor, assuming again, that we ensure that there is reliable, uh, accessible, affordable, and widely reliable access to these tools and technologies. It can have a, I think, extraordinarily democratizing effect on education, and it can really help lift students who are otherwise struggling to be able to understand and grapple with materials.